don't have time to do anything else, we'll just do the questions. Okay, any questions about the Vampire or this uh, A500 configuration? Okay, hearing, what is the configuration? It's just a, it's a revision 8A, A500, and the, it's had the CPU removed, and the Vampire put in its place, other than that, it's pretty stock configuration. I've got the extra half meg in the belly slot, but I'm, I don't think I'm even using it. So that's kind of the configuration I got here. It's pretty standard vampire configuration, but it's hard to say that there's any standard configuration when you've got one of six uh, V500 boards in the world right now. So, any other questions? Okay, Brian. Are you using the HDMI video feed for this or not? Yes, we're on the HDMI plug. That, that's coming straight out of the accelerator card for the HDMI right now. Okay, cool. So it's so Yeah, it's 800 by 600 HDMI right now. Let's see. You got the audio coming out of the machine yet? Uh, I had it muted. Are you playing? I will pull some up. I want to pull up something Eagle Player first. Okay, let's see if we can get some music out of this thing. It'll take a little bit. Okay, it's. I think it's trying to play already. Yeah, it's 12 seconds into the song, so it's not getting the audio. Yes. It is? Okay, it's kind of quiet. There it is. That's coming out of the Paula, by the way. It's using a... I'll, I'll pull up the... Okay, polyphase, polyphase sync mixer. Uh, that's, that basically requires an 040 or better to run. So if I had a stock 68,000, this would be choking to death right now. <laughs> but uh, it doesn't... Ooh, doesn't even strain on it with a uh, vampire. So, that's, okay, I'll get out of this now. And that was playing an MP3, and it wasn't straining or choppy enough that the even the mouse pointer wasn't stuttering or anything. So, that's, so the audio is working fine. Let's try something along the lines of Macintosh emulation. I tried Fusion earlier. I think that got a conflict. So I'll try Shapeshifter now. And it's going on the big screen, but not the little screen. Oh, there it comes up. OK. And now it's on the little screen, but not the big screen. Interesting. Let's just cut off the twice. Oh, OK. Well, I'll pull something up and see what happens. There it is. All right. Let's try a game. Warcraft 2. That never came out for the Amiga, did it? Yeah. No. Did it? If you have the right data files, there's a player that wants to put the data files. Oh, really? Okay. You get like a DOS version, non battle or something. Okay. Well, here's the, here's the Mac version. Yeah. <laughs> It'll run it. Oh, this is going to try and switch to 640 by 480. Do you think that'll screw things up? Uh, probably, probably. Probably. Let's try it. Too, Let's try it. <laughs> Let's try it. Okay. I mean, it's recoverable. Okay. A little bit of lag there because it's not got an FPU. I think it does that on the 3D. But the rest of the game is crystal clear and eat smooth sailing. This, uh, the Vampire Accelerator brings it up to about the equivalent, well, I'll, I'll show you later. I don't even have to tell you. I'll just show you later. But for now, I'll just show you what the... Okay, yeah, interesting, interesting. Next. Can you pop the sheet? What's that? Can you make a sheet explode? Oh, uh... I've done them like 25 times. Oh, I don't have a sheep, but I can uh, harvest some gold. Yeah, and then while we're at it, we'll make another peon. So, and then you, 
move up here. So it's playing pretty much full frame rate right now. And from what I understand, Shapeshifter, if you tried it on a conventional Amiga, wouldn't really do much. It was kind of slow. But we're not struggling at all. Okay, I think that's enough of this one. I'll get out of here. And scenario, exit program, exit program. And here we're back. Okay. So we know the Mac emulation is working pretty good. There was something else. Oh, here we go. Apple Diagnostics. This is going to be fun to watch. Uh, I think it's this one. Benchmark checks. Let's see how this stacks up against a Power Macintosh. CPU speed. It's measuring. Okay, the memory is two and a half, two point one two times faster than what the Power Macintosh came with. Let's see what the processor stacks up. A little slower, not terribly, but yeah. Okay, let's try integer. Oh, a little slower there too, but I. It doesn't have an FPU, so I'm not even going to mess with that one. Let's see how the video stacks up. It's just running a oh, just running a simple frame buffer runs 1.85 times faster, or 58, excuse me. So, but uh, anyway, the SDRAM is still faster than what the Power Mac had. Let's see how it stacks up against a Quadra. There, that's a little bit better. So yeah, this this is uh, I've been telling people this is equivalent to about a 200 megahertz 060, and this kind of agrees with that I think. So let's get out of here now. Uh, quit uh, file, quit, and it killed my color. I don't care about that. Okay, okay. I think I'll get out of the Mac emulation now. Okay, we're back. So how much RAM does the board have? 128 megs of RAM, but it's shared RAM. The video is also sharing the RAM, so it, as you can see, I'm already using about 8 megs for the video screen right now. So, let's see what else we can uh, find out. Uh, anything interesting here? Oh yeah, I was going to run the, the demo screen on Doom just to see how fast it goes at 640 by 480. And it'll pop up a screen requester pretty soon. There, we'll just keep it at 640 by 480, see how it likes it. Ah, that looks familiar. And here it goes. About 20 frames per second. I. Uh, I can remember when I was playing it on my O30 back in the day that it, that even at half this resolution it wasn't making much headway. Uh, I, I did have one hack that would be improve on the speed a little bit, but that was just basically rerouting the WAD file to the RAM disk. And I'm, I haven't done that here, but it doesn't seem to need it. Oh, one note about the configuration, I'm running uh, card flash adapter for instead of a hard drive so that kind of speeds up the disk accesses as well okay I'm gonna get out of here okay and we're back and it was running on a 8-bit chunky screen as you can see there so there was no chunky to planar lag at all and uh, yeah, it was it was moving around pretty good clip. Uh, some of the rest of this stuff I haven't really tried. Frontier. Oh, Frontier runs off the chipset. I don't have that hooked up. Okay. I, I had that on the TV screen earlier, but I had to switch to the to the composite. Okay. Anything else? Vista Pro. Vista Pro. I haven't tried that one. Let's let's go ahead and try it. At the risk of not doing anything, let's. It's a demo, sure. Because I have this running on my X5000 under uh, OS39. Or, yeah, I think it just tried to open a planar screen because I can't see it. So you should be able to begin. 
Yeah. Amiga M? Yeah, it's there. Chris was there. Just click the button. And you're now on the screen. Okay. Uh, so it's there. It's just taking up memory. Can you drag down? Like, you might not show it in the OS. Yeah, it's a, it's a Picasso 96 screen. I can't drag it. Got it. Okay. Oh, well. But, uh, I'm yeah. I'm sure it's working very, very nicely. Yeah, it's, it's only taking up a few megs out of the 117 megs I have left. So, so it's probably only taking up two. Um, the reason this was on here probably was to test the floating point because we don't have a floating point unit. I didn't mention that yet, so yeah, we don't yet have a floating point unit in this. But it's an FPGA, so... So, so we can add it. Yeah, we can add it later. And I think Gunnar is already working on it for the gold 2 core. I'm running the gold 1 core right now. So, let's see. Anything else? Well, probably not in this directory. Well, what the heck. I'll pull up image effects 4. I showed Trevor that and he kind of liked it. Okay, we'll pull up uh, what's a nice resolution? 800 by 600 by 32 bit, maybe? Okay, it's up there. I'm waiting for it to come up here. There it goes. Now let's, let's just open a picture and see how long it takes to load. This crystal girl I've seen in a magazine, it's pretty famous. We'll pull it up. Uh, smoothing on, yeah. Okay. And there it is. Didn't take long. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I'll close. Oh. Uh, the 5,000 might win. Yeah. But, but not by a lot. Not by a lot, though. Compared to 500? Yeah. Yeah, not bad. It's definitely surreal that you're on Amiga 500. Yeah. This is probably the world's fastest Amiga 500 right now. Okay, so we're, we'll get out of this. Huh. Any demos that you run? I haven't tried any actual demos because most of them bang the chipset and I don't have the chipset hooked up to the big screen. Yeah, so. You get some of the cyber one. What's that one? Nova? With like the pyramids and seven minutes long? Anyone? No. Okay, well, they, I know they have some newer ones that probably would work, but. Okay. Very cool, man. But, oh, speaking of chipset. That's another feature they want to add in the future is uh, AGA emulation in the FPGA coming out the HDMI. So then, what do you need the motherboard for? Just plug it into the... Oh, and speaking of which, they want to come out with a standalone board after they're done with the A1200 version. So, we'll see what comes up next. So, let's see, I, I was in here, there's not much that worked there. Oh, programming, I know. We'll pull up Hollywood. Pull up a few demos of that. Requires a bit, not a non, let's see, what does it require? True color or 16 bit screen mode. And here it is. Well, I can tell you right now these 3D ones are going to crawl like a slideshow because we don't have an FPU and we don't have graphics acceleration. So, and then likewise, the alpha blending is running on a fallback mode in the Picasso 96 so that's also going to crawl so I'm, I'm just putting that disclaimer on it now but we'll see what else we can pull up uh, this we'll display this one I've got a few plugins we might be able to pull up some audio okay I'm going to see if I can pull up that other pro, that other file that I had up earlier that was in the Daddy, Amiga Amp, MP3, there it is. Loading, loading, loading. Ooh, that doesn't look so good. I had it working earlier. <laughs> well, maybe it doesn't work. Well, okay. Hmm. Oh, there it goes. Let's play it. It's yeah, it's playing. Okay, 
Okay. Uh, it's a little bit more lag here than I had in the other one, but okay. Okay, stop. <laughs> it's a little rough for it. Yeah, it's a little rough under the under Hollywood, but it's still handling it. Yeah. Okay. And for an MP3, that I think was, what was it, 128K bit per second? So that was not doing too bad. It'll probably go faster once we get some uh, AM, A, what was it, AMMX acceleration in that, as will the alpha blending, I'm sure, too. We're, we're still working on audio and video drivers to take advantage of the full vector unit idea. Uh, okay. Any of these look? Oh, I had one up earlier. Ah, I know what I'll do. What about an app like Wordsworth or something? Oh, I had that on here, but I, d I don't know. It's the old version. It might try and pull up a planar display again. So, um, it'll pull up the MUI demo as long as I'm here in Hollywood. See, uh, see how Hollywood 6.1 copes with uh, MUI. All right, and there it is. The famous MUI demo. Are there any thoughts around adding network capability to that? Oh, the flip box uh, is the, currently the best way to do it. There is thoughts about coming out with an A500 Plus edition, which will have an SPI interface that could hook a, a Ethernet or Wi-Fi connection up to it. So yeah, there are thoughts in that direction. They just haven't been implemented yet. But a flip box will work on anything, so that's not too too big of a concern. It's it's there. Let's see, yeah, that seems pretty quick and snappy. Quit. Video player didn't work earlier because <laughs> of the plugins. Okay. Oh. I didn't try this one yet, but I know Hollywood will not pull up a planar screen, so let's pull that one up. Play. There she is, Amy the Squirrel. And still no lag, of course this is just playing an anim, but on a chunky display this time. So. Hollywood's working pretty good. Um, some of the plugins may need be a little rough around the edges, but so now let's see what else I got here. Most of this stuff still doesn't work. E should, but I don't have it actually fully installed. Um, actually, I think I do have it fully installed, but watching things compile is not that exciting. <laughs> okay. Um, Oh yeah, you wanted Wordsworth? I'll I'll see if it pulls up a planar screen. Nope, it pulls up, it comes up okay. All right, I'll get out of here. Oh, thank you. Uh, no, mm. quit Wordsworth. Okay, but anyway, that worked. Okay. Uh, Turbo Calc. I haven't tried this one either. Okay, there it is. It didn't waste any time either. I think I'll go ahead and quit out of this though. Just to, I just wanted to see how long it'd take to load. It didn't take too long. Okay, we've seen games. We've seen uh, productivity software. We've seen graphics processing. And of course, none of this is optimized fully for the processor. It's brand new. So if we got upward capabilities ready to happen. Fractals. Fractals, that opens on a planar screen also, and it requires an FPU. It's just on here to test the FPU capabilities. It, uh, it's not going to work right now. Sorry, I tried that one earlier. Let's see, speed test. Star Trek 25th anniversary edition. Oh. Do I have that on here? Unplayable. Oh. Right? I'll see if I have it on here. I, I, I'm assuming you don't. It's uh, probably not. No. 
really slow. Uh, what about on this machine, it would probably rip. It probably would. <laughs> uh, SimCity 2000, that's another good one to demo. Because that okay. was horrific. Yeah, uh, did I was, did I have that one in here? I don't think. I'm uh, just making stuff off the top of my head. I remember right well, I got Civilization, if you want to try that. Civ was always pretty playable. Okay. But Sim, Sim City 2000 and yeah, cause it, Star Trek 25th. Uh, I know that Sim City, the problem was that it always ran on a planar display and used the blitter. Yeah. So if no, I, Sim City 2000. 2000 is the one I was talking about. Yeah. Oh, 3000 you mean? Uh, actually, they're both my PHA. I could be a little bit wrong about that. But this, well, having a CPU would make a big difference. Uh, the CPU would make a big difference. Having a chunky display would have made a big difference, too. Since all we can display now is chunky display, I'd have to display it under Mac emulation, and that always ran playably on a real Amiga. Yeah, but with Mode Pro, you can promote. Oh, okay. So there's ways around that. Okay. Very cool. But, uh, yeah, let's see. Any other requests that you, directories you saw that I haven't tried yet? Or questions, concerns. I anything, so you, <laughs> <laughs> you just walked in, okay. Uh, what's that? I was telling Thomas to go look up on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, oh. Uh, oh, yeah, the 68080. I guess I can get up and do a little lecturing now that I've showed you some stuff. The 080 core uh, can combine steps pretty well. It has an opcode fusion feature that allows it to, um, if, if it notices a pattern in the two opcodes that can execute in one bus cycle in one pipeline, it will do it. So like the PowerPC does three operand math functions, putting a move in front of an add instruction will do the same thing on the 080. And since they're both 16-bit instructions, it comes out to the same 32 bits as the PowerPC's 32-bit 3-operand instruction. So it's catching up with the PowerPC in a matter of speaking. What's that about 080 chip? 080? The 080 is a soft core. But was that actual chip 080? No, not yet. If we get the bugs worked out of it, maybe in a few years, you never know. But right now it's not a chip, it's a soft core, it runs inside the FPGA. It's running on a Cyclone 3 Altera chip right now. So. Uh, can I okay, sure. Because um, I had the Vampire 1, it didn't have the RTG stuff. So okay. It runs over Picasso 96, right? Yeah, right now it's running over Picasso 96. We've got another guy working on, uh, on the... Uh, Cyber graphics? Cyber Graphics 3, yes. but, not, but not the Amiga version. It's the AROS version of Cyber Graphics 3. So if we can get that working and get it accelerated with AMMX, it may actually become usable to use uh, AROS instead of uh, Amiga OS for some of this stuff. Because, uh, yeah. Now, what we're looking at right now is a Picasso 96. Yeah, right. This, this is a P96, Picasso 96. Max Risk? Uh, I've been running it at I've been running it at half of high definition, both horizontally and vertically. Our video, our uh, overhead projector didn't quite like that resolution, so right now I'm running at a 800 by 600, and it's uh, true color, I think. No, this one's 16 bit. I'll pull it up to true color just to show it. This backdrop screen is. Uh, Okay, let's try a 24 bit. Okay, we'll try we'll try 24 bit. Here, because the cutting it off, but. <laughs> I know. So, <laughs> yeah, P96 has its hang-ups, but let's see how... Oh, that didn't take long to come up. I remember on my A1200, this uh, color wheel would take about a half a second to redraw, and it came up pretty quick, though, this time. So, cancel this. Did you show shape I did. I did, and I showed Warcraft 2. So that's been shown. Are there any Amiga apps installed in there? 
Yeah, I showed some of those too. Uh, I showed Hollywood. Oh, I got some on here. I, sh I showed TurboCalc, loading time, and WordWorth. I tried VistaPro, but it tried to open up planar screen, so it's probably running in the background now, hogging most of my chip RAM. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's probably trying to run a double NTSC on, but I don't have the composite hook up on the big screen, so I can't use it. So, yeah, this particular one's limited to two megabytes chip RAM, but since the P96 screen is using the Oh, you can't see that, and it's, you can't see it up there either. It's running off of the task Yeah. So right now, I'm only using chip RAM for planar screens and audio. And there's another plan we're coming up with. The uh, next core may have HDMI audio that will also be an AHI coming right off the, A it's the same plug as the video. So we'll, we'll be able to use AHI to run our for these extra cables. It goes by the physical chip RAM of the Amiga right now, but uh, if we get the chipset emulation for the soft core, the onboard memory on the accelerator instead, so you'll end up with 128 megs of chip RAM, basically. Wow. But that that's a, that's a ways out. That'll be a few years, maybe uh, a few months at the latest, earliest. Excuse me. But uh, yeah, I don't know what the a lot of these. I don't know what they do. Some of them open on planar screens. Fusion. I try. I tried that earlier before I before the demo, and something in the graphics driver or something hung up. It didn't work. It, Shapeshifter worked, but Fusion didn't. I don't know why. Okay. Well, he was running on an A600, so he may have had a different version of the core than I've got. I'm just running the standard. Gold and uh, he might have had something newer. Yeah, but Jim Drew has, has been in contact with the team, so he's, he wants to get Fusion working on it also. And he probably had a test version working also. So, I guess uh, if there's no other questions, I guess I might as well wrap it up. Um, yeah, I guess I don't see anything extra here. What about the manufacturing? Okay. Okay, yeah. The for the during the open beta, there was a manufacturing thing that uh, that Igor and Kip and uh, Brian Kippa, uh, I forget his last name. Anyway, he they were making partially by hand because the FPGA itself, if it tested bad, would make the whole board bad. So they soldered the FPGAs on after testing them. Now. Now that they've got the gold core out, the open beta period is over. So the A600 version has gone up in cost because it, they're actually manufacturing them now. They're 100 at a time. And once we get the backlog cleared from the A600, then they'll start manufacturing the A500 that I've got here. They're, they're being manufactured. Uh, by outsourcing, right? Yeah, since we were doing it by hand. Are they still hand soldering parts of the board? Not anymore. They'll, they'll be manufacturing them using conventional means from now on. Otherwise, we'll end up with a backlog. Yeah, this is surface mount. Um, you, I don't know if you, you could bring the camera up here. I'll. Well, I, I guess we can't put that through the big screen anyway, but I'll just. Turn it off and pop the lid, and we'll. I could. Okay, because uh, I. Yeah, I guess I didn't really have much more to show. Um, One more thing, Sam. Sorry. Uh, yes. And, um, I see you have the 500 version there, and I know that the 2000 version goes to the CPU slot, right? Right. So is there an adapter board, or is it a separate board? There is an adapter board that will get the A500 version of the Vampire to work on the A2000. 
Yeah, what that's CDTV. CDTV. Um, right now, there's too many physical constraint conflicts in there. And plus, we're using a patch kickstart, so trying to squeeze in the additional extended ROM might present a problem. We're, we, we, I think we've, we're working on that as well, but I don't want to make any promises we can't keep. But we're yeah, looking into it. we're looking into it. Uh, we're looking into a lot of things, though. So. What about the four thousand? You guys get that? Oh, the four thousand and three thousand. Uh, they used the same CPU slot, but. Since they also also already used uh, the Zero 3 slots for expansion, I've heard that those Zero 3 slots are a little more timing sensitive than the Zero 2s in the A2000 series. So it's looking like we're going to put off indefinitely any plans for the A3000 and 4000. Hopefully by the time we, we would get done with the A1200, we'll be in a position that we can come out with standalone motherboards that don't even have the legacy components. Would they have Zorro slots at that point? What you're saying is no, you don't want to mess with bus timing. We don't want to mess with that. Right. The bus timings of a Zorro 3 card would be problematic. Um, or maybe problematic. We just haven't looked at it yet and it would be at least a year or two before we get a chance. So that's kind of way out there a ways. But, uh, if, you, if you know somebody with a video toaster 2000, it'd be interesting to see Lightwave running on one of these once we get the plant floating point unit working. Yeah! <laughs> right here. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you.